Welcome back, C2E2. We are here at the C2E2 live stage. We're Sci-Fi Wire. I'm Jordan Zachard. I'm the features editor at Sci-Fi Wire. We are your home for everything geeky. Podcasts, articles, videos. If you can consume it, we'll put it out. Uh, keep following us with hashtag C2E2, hashtag it's a fan thing. Right now, we've got Henry Barajas, who is a multi-hyphenate comics professional. Yeah, that's me. Hey, everybody. What's up, Chicago? So. <laughs> Love the enthusiasm. <laughs> I'm enthusiastic about this because you've got a comic book that you kickstarted, which yes. is awesome. Why don't you tell us all about that? The successful Kickstarter for a book about your grandfather. Yeah, so I kickstarted a comic about my great grandfather, uh, Ramon Jaurige. He was a political activist, a World War II veteran. He was a, a Marine uh, sniper, and he helped one of the last Native American tribes uh, prevent their land from being taken by the city of Tucson so they can build a freeway through uh, their property that they've lived on since like the 1800s. And um, it was never properly documented. And I wanted to do my best to honor his legacy, honor the work that him and the Mexican American Yaqui and others community had done. Uh, they were uh, called La Voz de Mayo, which is the, the name of the book, La Voz de Mayo, Tata Rambo. And I kickstarted it and the artist uh, Jay Gonzo with uh, letter uh, Bernard Brees and the uh, editor Claire Napier. They all helped me tell my family history using pictures and words. First of all, your great-grandfather was a badass. <laughs> That's why we call him Tata Rambo. <laughs> I mean, it's a sniper and also helped save that land. I mean, yeah. geez, that's incredible. And then how long did you work in comics? You work at Top I do. Cow. I work at Top Cow Productions. I'm director of operations. I love my job. It's a dream gig. And Top Cow is putting this book out, but that's after you kickstarted it. So, how long did you want to write this thing? I've, you know, my family used to tell me that he did great things, but they didn't really put it in, in any way that I could understand. So, I was a journalist in Tucson, Arizona, and I'd done a lot of stories about people. So, I decided to go back into my own past and ask questions about the kinds of things he did. And I, it was really amazing to find out that he was an orphan, to find out how his his mother and father had passed away and how he kind of like Steve Rogers, Captain America, joined the Marine Corps, wow. lied about his age to get out of the orphanage and fight for his country. And you don't see a lot of Mexicans portrayed or Mexican-Americans portrayed um, as war heroes in media. So I wanted to um, shed a light on that type of representation, you know. Right. So it took three years to do all the research interview surviving members. I interviewed uh, Congressman Raul Grijalva, and it was an amazing journey, and it was so uh, gratifying to see it in print, and I'm very honored that Matt Hawkins was kind enough to help me uh, publish it and help me find uh, Gonzo, and um, it, it was just a three-year-long um, journey. We're currently working on Chapter 2, which we're going to bring back to Kickstarter, and then uh, we're going to work on chapter three, and then the trade paperback will be out the first week of November. It's so cool that you had people to be able to tell you about these things, and you were able to keep this history a lot, not only alive, but put it out for so many people, because I feel like so many of these things, we're in such a 24-7 political cycle, history gets forgotten so quickly. And this is a really important story. Could you tell me a little Thank more you. about the context of that? Yeah, so in 1970, uh, the La Voz de Mayo crew was comprised of Native Americans, Mexican Americans, Mexicans that had crossed the border, and um, they were in danger of losing their home. There was 12,000 people that were going to lose their land that they've had their entire lives. Kind of like the Dakota Access Pipeline, you know, sitting at home watching that while making that book was very, uh, it was like a wake-up call. Like every moment there's something happening to Native Americans that isn't on the news, that isn't in a regular conversation, that gets lost in the 24-hour news cycle. So I love comic books, and I do reporting for sci-fi, and I've done reporting for Tucson comic, I mean, for the Tucson community. And it was just, it, it, was, uh, it was really gratifying to take what they had done, worked with their local politicians. They worked, uh, it, if it wasn't for Jimmy Carter's administration, to have sympathy and also be friends with uh, Morris Udall to have made that happen, to give them their land so they can have reparations, they can have health care, education, things that 
was stolen from them essentially. So to do to honor my great grandfather, to honor Native Americans, and to do something like this is it, I feel very grateful to do. You know, he is a real life superhero. He was. But it's not like a superhero comic book in the traditional sense, which makes it, was it harder to get people to back you on Kickstarter? Yeah, because people like, you know, you know, when you think of comic books, a lot of people think of like Batman and Superman. Sure. You know, and I, I, I was inspired by John Lewis's March that came out through Top Shelf and IDW. So I wanted to do something with something that I love. And, excuse me. <coughs> oh, I wanted to do something very un, not very conventional do you know report news and history that has been lost for 40 years and to find an audience of people that wanted to see that type of representation it's very niche you know and it's not the most uh, exciting and even though I try to make it pretty lively in the book but there it's definitely an uphill battle well what's interesting is you did get successful uh, funding and Top Cow's putting it out. So there's a possible wide audience for it, which is pretty cool. And I feel like people will be interested in finding out about that, especially given the political circumstances we have now. So what's the plan? Is it coming out this summer? How are you going to push it? Yeah, so um, in the comic book market, it's, it's a really difficult monthly market. So I knew that I wouldn't do as well as like a Batman or Superman book. So I wanted to go directly to trade paperback, but also I wanted to pay my artists and my editor and um, so Kickstarter is a great place to find 300 to 400 people and do a small print run of 500 and you're not stuck with thousands of books. You're not stuck owing your publisher money. So I wanted to do something that was very, you know, down to earth, very easy to accomplish. I sent all the packages. So I wanted to give something, because you know, floppy single comic book issues is a collector's market. So when this trade paperback comes out, they're gonna have to really dig for the 400 books that I sent out. And there's no barcode on them, you know, it's super indie, self-published stuff. So that's why we're going straight to trade. It's gonna be 120 pages, uh, trade paperback. It's gonna have my back matter, uh, writing that my great-grandfather Ramon Jauriga had published, stuff that he had done with he had, the, it's the reason why it's called La Voz de Mayo is because they had a newsletter that was bilingual in the Native American Yaqui language, English and Spanish, to inform the community about what was going on, whether it be uh, rituals or news that the city of Tucson was trying to take their homes away, or just stuff that was happening around the church because it was a very Catholic uh, community. So I wanted to bring back his newsletter in print after 40 years and then tell a story kind of like what, you know, Cesar Ch he worked with Cesar Chavez. So it was just trying to, you know, tell a story that you would normally not see anywhere else. What a life. You know, my family's not, if I was to do a comic book about my family, they're not nearly as interesting. It'd probably be pretty <laughs> grim. So I can imagine my family kind of picking it apart a little bit. Right. How did your family react? Because you're writing oh. about some of them. Yeah, uh, the news sent my uncle and into a heart attack. <laughs> like literally? No, he ate really bad. So oh, okay. like it, it was, the stress wasn't probably good for him, but the, you know, the, the family was very conflicted because it was, you know, one, uh, it's a, an elder, you know, within native and Mexican uh, tradition, the elder is very uh, respected and held in high regard. So they were skeptical. They saw the first issue. They loved it. They're very proud and happy for me. So I'm very um, glad that I could do that for my family and that hopefully if they have kids and they want to know what their great grandfather was like, they can give them this book and give them some, some information that I was cra craving when I was a kid. Do you have any other family members in the book? Like, do you have a grandparent who's also depicted? Yeah, I mean, my great-grandmother, uh, Leonor, you know, uh, I'm in it, my mom's in it. It's, it happens within three time spans, so okay. it's, it's a lot of fun and, and <laughs> for me to see me at that point in 2015 when I first started. So I try to give everybody their due. Do you make yourself pretty heroic? Oh my gosh, I'm so buff. <laughs> I'm like too buff. 
they must have been excited to see themselves in comic book form. Oh, yeah. They, I mean, they didn't really know what I was doing. They still don't understand, you know? <laughs> it's, it's comic books. Your family doesn't know what's happening. Oh, yeah. My mom couldn't access this live stream if she desperately wanted to. <laughs> so you said, like, you, it's going to come out. There's a, you know, it's going to be a trade paperback. Yes. You want to do more stories about this time in history? Oh, definitely. There are so many Native American tribes that have been etched out of history off the face of this earth that deserve... Uh, to their stories to be told uh, and I, I love comics and I love telling stories using comics so yeah I, as a native I, I took Native American history in, in high school so I know there's a lot of people out there with beautiful amazing stories that would really resonate with um, our times now and it's nice that Kickstarter proves that people want to see that you know a lot of times publisher and you work for a publisher they can be skeptical about oh yeah oh will this sell but you get hundreds of people putting up money before the thing's even made, that's a great statement. Oh, yeah, and I'm, I'm really happy to have found uh, a place that respects what I'm doing, and they're excited about what I'm trying to accomplish, and I hope to elevate other uh, Latinx and Native voices uh, as best as I can. So how can people, now that Kickstarter's over, how can people, they've seen this, they're into it, how can people find this thing? You can uh, look me up, Henry Barajas, you can look, la, la, look up La Voz de Mayo, Tata Rambo on Kickstarter, it links you to the first digital PDF. You can uh, download it, it's 80 pages. It's nearly all of my back matter, all of my research is included. Uh, you, can find, uh, you can find it at the Kickstarter website. That's really awesome, and so, are you nervous, are you excited, how do you feel? I'm, the nervous is done, I'm excited. I just wanna move on with my life now. <laughs> <laughs> it's a long time to work on something. Yes, yeah, I'm, I'm ready to move on onto stuff that doesn't either make my family or upset my family. <laughs> That's a good goal. Now, we are going to continue on here at C2E2. Keep watching. We have a great show continuing throughout the day. Use the hashtag C2E2. Hashtag it's a fan thing. Remember those hashtags. We keep saying them. We keep saying them. Next, we got Valiant Presents Bloodshot 101.